Hello everyone, it is Saturday, January 29th. I'm John Zadar, aka The Stock Wizard. You are watching On Top and Hot. These are brought to you by Titan Trading. Titan Trading is our Discord group that is solely dedicated to NFTs, cryptocurrencies, and my particular favorites, the OTC and the penny stocks. If any of these are of interest to you, come on over, it's free. So in case you haven't guessed already, we are looking at Surge Battery Metals. This is a Canadian company. They're a mining company. Their ticker for Canada is N-I-L-I. -I. The American ticker is N-I-L-I-F. Now the whole world is moving towards EVs right now. And the demand for so-called green minerals such as nickel, copper, lithium is growing growing faster than even the EV market. And that is what this company is all about. Lithium, copper, and nickel. Between two countries, two of the friendliest countries when it comes to mining, America and Canada. So let's jump over to the otcmarkets.com and get some information about it. So NILIF finished the week on Friday at just over 12 cents, 0 0.1206. She did have a down day, just over 7% down. She's on the pink tier and current, has a verified profile, transfer agent, and independent directors. This you need if you plan on uplisting. And I have heard rumor they do plan on uplisting. So, you know that this company is a mining company. Surge Battery Meadows is a Canadian-based mineral exploration company active in the exploration for nickel iron alloy and copper in British Columbia and lithium in Nevada, with its primary listing on the Canadian Venture Exchange. The company maintains a focus on exploration for the high-value battery metals required for electric vehicle markets. Now they put some bullets in here which are pretty prominent. The company owns 100% interest in 38 mineral claims located in Nevada. The company has entered into a property option agreement to acquire 100% interest in seven mineral claims known as the Caledonia, Cascade, and Bluebell. And the last one they got here, the company has entered into an option agreement with Nickel Rock Resources to acquire an 80% interest in six mineral claims in the Mount Sydney area. So they've got a lot going on and there's more. This was just the tip of the iceberg. Now the company hasn't got any current news. There's no actual catalyst going on right now. We're looking at this stock because it's sitting on the precipice of big gains. Right now the market is just exploding for minerals and we don't need them from China and we don't need them from South America. We need them from our own country or at least our neighboring country on the same continent. Makes it a little easier to keep them around. So what sort of relative volume was around this company today? Yeah, a little bit more than normal, just a wee bit. 229,000 today or Friday as it was, 257,000. So she's running even keel right now. And what about her share structure? We got anything to brag about there? Well, it's under 100 million. We are at 83 million, which really isn't bad, especially when a stock starts to grow. And I anticipate that this mining company, and as I've said before, I'm not much of a guy into mining, but I understand nickel and lithium, and I understand copper. I understand surges. I understand demand, and I know this one is moving fast. All right, what sort of financials has she got? I don't think she's actually doing anything yet. No, she is not. I don't see Shell Risk or Shell Company over here, but in either case, things are getting in that position. I don't know exactly when they're going to rip it up, but they darn sure look like they're going to. Disclosures, really not a lot going on over there except for their quarterly reports, which don't have any revenues right now. So let's jump on over into the news. Now, most of this news has already been listed right there in their description. Uh, you can see here they've only got two pieces of news for this year, and it is focused on Nevada. And the last piece of news from last year, that too was focused on Nevada. And they've been doing a lot out there. Let's take a look at that last piece of news that came out on the 20th of this month. January 20th, Surge Battery Metals is pleased to announce it has entered into a letter of intent dated January 11th, 2022 to earn an undivided 80% interest in 16 lithium mining claims compromised of 640 acres and located within Nevada's San Emilio Desert. Now this is kind of important because this is the timeline. This is what we want to watch for. 
This agreement is subject to a standstill clause and an additional due diligence period by both parties ending January 31st, just a couple days away, followed by the signing of a definitive agreement by February 28th to be approved by the vendors. Now there's a lot of details in here about the deal, but when I scroll it on down, there are certain pieces of information here that jumped out at me. The San Amito property match characteristics of lithium brine and clay deposits at the Clayton Valley, Nevada and in South America. A lot of this information is about the testing of the area and it is about the clay and it is showing the same results as other high producing areas. So they are very confident. Now something has started to jump out at me because I couldn't find a total number of claims, but you start to get an idea of how many they have. Now when you think about this, most mining companies I see have a few claims. They got a few mines. If they're lucky, a lot of them just have one. <laughs> I haven't been able to determine exactly how many this one has. Uh, the company owns 100% interest in 95 mineral claims located in Elko County, Nevada. San Amito Desert Lithium Project consists of 60 mineral claims. That's 155 right there. Surge Nickel Project consists of six mineral claims. Uh, they have another one here, interest in seven mineral claims, but there's others as well. I even read somewhere that they say they have over 200 between Canada and America in lithium and nickel and copper. Now I put together five key points here that a lot of people are going to agree with, I'm sure. So these are five factors that make this a very good opportunity. They are timed well, they are placed well, and they're in the right place at the right time. I mean, simply put, they are in America with these minerals, not in China. And we've got a EV demand and a battery mineral surge. So I can't think of a better company to be looking at right now. This company is well positioned in a massive mining portfolio, over 200 mines, with five promising projects across two of the world's friendliest mining jurisdictions, Canada and the USA. Now, this is good for a lot of reasons, folks. As I stated, it's here in the North American continent. American companies that are going to need this will be able to access a lot easier than if it was coming from China. And two, it's just easier dealing in these countries when it comes to mining. They are familiar with them. They're citizens here. It just makes it a lot easier. The second reason, the demand for EVs they project is going to grow 15 times just here in the very near future and it has been surging a lot from the last 10 years to what they think the next 10 years is going to be is going to be expansive and exponential but they expect that the battery metal sector is going to grow 500 times faster that's equivalent to 50 thousand percent up 50 thousand percent 500 times surge is an ideal position to capitalize on its fully funded esg mandated projects that support a cleaner future. That ESG designation, that's huge. ESG mandated companies get three times more business than non-ESG mandated companies. So it is a major factor in this game. Now, we can't overlook the fact that the company's got a lot of mines. Not even sure how many there are, but you can see they've got their five projects listed here in British Columbia, six mineral claims, uh, covering an area of 1,863 hectares. Now, an acre is one size, a hectare is another size, and it doesn't matter if I give you the dimensions, it just isn't going to play out for you. So look at that picture. That is a soccer field. An acre, eh, about half of a soccer field. And a hectare, eh, just under one and a half times the entire field. So now they have 1,863 of those hectares and these six mineral claims. That is huge. That's just for six. Then they have the Decor Project covering 8,659 hectares, also in British Columbia, Canada. The Caledonia Project includes 100% interest in seven mineral claims. And then they have uh, 
The Northern Nevada, which includes 95 different claims across 778 hectares with stream sediment samples that run as high as 1980 ppmi. Promising results from the company's initial assessments were released 12-30-21. That is the whole deal right there. This is happening right now. Their exploration is moving ahead here in the summer and they have big dreams as we should do because everybody needs what they're probably going to find in a very lithium rich environment. Then the very last one further west just a few miles from Tesla's new Gigafactory is the company San Emedino Desert Project. This area has historically been home to high documented concentrations of lithium and phase one exploration should be coming to close by summer of 2022. Phase two of exploration would then involve drilling exploratory holes by the end of 2022. And you can see they've got a lot of the Northern Calif or California, Northern Nevada area here. Here's their San in Medito area that they've just gotten, there's their Clayton and all their area up in British Columbia. So they are covering a lot of area. The fourth reason, Surge Battery Meadows is well capitalized, fully funded for 2022 exploration with 4.2 million in working capital. As of September 2021, they had just over 4 million compared to the year before when they were in a deficit of 125,000. So they've come a long ways and they have enough money to carry them over into part of next year. And if they need more money, they have warrants they can turn over for an additional $8 million. And finally, they've assembled what they consider a dream team, highly talented individuals to help them drive this business to its potential, to making money. So we're looking at a one year, one day chart for NILIF. And it's an interesting chart. The first thing you notice is that half of the year, roughly, she has volume and the other half she doesn't. And the half she has the volume in, there is price action, good and bad, but there's price action. Without the volume, not a lot of price action. So her means before she was doing anything is right about there. And we've hit that, we've broke it and we're underneath it right now. We've taken that dip. Then you had all of this excitement, a huge jump, and then climb, 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 all the way up to a new high. Now all of this was about the same thing, the San and Medeo properties in Nevada. Everybody was excited about it, as you can see. That right there, the initial news was a 66% jump in that day. So even with 83 million, give her some volume. And look, there's hardly any volume there. Hardly any volume there and we got that jump because people saw value. Not a lot of people, but a lot of interest out of those people. Now we've got a lot of volume. Once people see the true value, these sort of bumps could be very easy with this 83 million. You could see that down at these prices. Now we had all that excitement lift this up to a new means right there. All of the news about San Medeo, all the lithium mines, got everyone excited, hit a new high, 35 cents, and something brought it down. I'm not quite sure what it did, but it fell to a whole new zone down here, which is right where she's stuck right now. Now let's come in on that four hour, six month view. All right, we see our 200 haul, which is 200 days of data, is pulling up. Now this gives more current effect to its curves rather than the 200 SMA, which is way up here. We've broke it, but the current one shows we are coming out of this dip, which is a very good sign. The volume is here, the turn is here, and we have broken the 200. Let's come down now to the 20 day, one hour. All right, you can see we're in a channel. We're just stuck there. You know, these lines are drawn from all the way back there and we are pretty much at the bottom of this channel. So she could tap right here at just about 11 cents, just, just under 11. She could tap that and then start to bounce back. There's our 200. She needs to get above that. You can see what happens when she does. She's willing to climb and she is just under it right now. This is a real good buy zone. This is really a good buy zone. She could come right down here. This would probably be her best price. I mean, it's not impossible to go lower, but things are happening now. There's a lot of things on the table. And the fact of the matter is, 
this transition into the EV, it is global, and it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And the more uh, speed it picks up, the more of, well, let's just say bottleneck that this company could be trapped in. It could be like a shorting of a stock. Everybody's gonna want these minerals. Everybody's gonna need these minerals and the value of what they're doing is gonna grow. And they have so many mines that the potential here, I'm not a miner, but 200 mines with copper, lithium, and nickel when the world needs it and needs it the most, I think that's potential for a big explosive growth, literally. Now, in my opinion, I think Surge Battery Metals has a lot of advantages over the other companies. One, they're in North America, Canada, and the USA, close where we need them. Two, they are involved in nickel, copper, and lithium, one of the only TSXV companies to be doing that. And three, not to be overlooked, they have a huge portfolio of hundreds of claims. Fact of the matter is, it can cost a small fortune to discover and develop new claims and take years to do it. The company has got five projects with hundreds of claims, giving them all sorts of flexibility to work the ones that are needed the most and subsidize others and actually maybe start finding other metals at the same time. There's a lot of information here, folks. Looks good to me, but do your own DD and see what it looks like for you. I'm not talking about a runner tomorrow or next week. I'm talking about this baby making some money down the road. How long is it going to take the EV market to turn over? I mean, completely engulf the country. Well, give this that chance and it'll really fill your bank. I'm pretty confident about that. The more you know, the more you grow. See you, folks.